Hi, Geometry Advanced students. I am sorry I'm not able to be there with you um, today. I am at a uh, math teacher's, actually nerdier than that, geometry teacher's um, kind of little one-day conference for how to be a better geometry teacher. Um, one thing we didn't have time on because of your quizzes and everything on um, Friday was to go over the homework supplement. Now here's one thing I want to emphasize. There is no excuse for not looking back in your old notes. This stuff came from chapter three, talking about equations of lines, and the notes, that was from 5-3. And you have to be able to start synthesizing the information together. You cannot just compartmentalize and just memorize for one test. It will hurt you later on. And as an honor student, or excuse me, advanced student, you are supposed to be able to rise to the occasion and understand sometimes it's hard. Don't get frustrated, call me or something like that. So let's do these together. I'll tell you number two is the hardest, <clears throat> but I will help you do these. Excuse me, I have a frog in my throat a little bit. First thing they say, sketch the altitude from A to segment BC. Now remember when we were doing this in class, and I did this on the video, when you're doing an altitude, from A, you put the side that you want parallel to yourself, and then you draw your altitude straight down. And that will form a right angle, which means these two segments have to be perpendicular to each other. And so we know that's the case. Now they ask the following then from that diagram. What is the relationship of the slope of the altitude and the slope of segment BC? If they are perpendicular segments, they form right angles. What do we know about perpendicular line slopes? They are opposite reciprocals. So they're opposite reciprocals. Now they want me to find, or you guys to find, the equation of this altitude and point slope form. Well, what do we need for point slope form? Remember, that's y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1, which is going to be the form I initially write every one of these equations with. I need a point and I need a slope. Well, the cool thing is I know the point. They told me it's negative 4, negative 2. There's no problem with that. But the thing that's missing is the slope. But here's the hint. Do I know the slope of segment BC or can I find it? Yes, I know the two points. This one's 3, 7, and this point's at 4, negative 4. So I can at least find the slope of what it's perpendicular to, and then I'm going to use the opposite reciprocal. So here, the slope of segment BC, the change in y of the change of x, so negative 4, minus 7, over 4 minus 3. That's a negative 11 over 1. But I want the slope that's perpendicular. So I want the opposite reciprocal. So that's 1 over 11. So then as we're going with that, I'm then going to plug it into my point slope form using the point of the altitude I do know, point A. So that's y minus a negative 2. So that's plus 2 equals the slope of 1 11 times the quantity x minus a negative 4, so that makes that a positive 4. There we have the equation of the altitude. Not difficult if we apply what we've already known from chapter 3 equations of lines. Now on the next one, these are hard to read, but that doesn't mean you can't go ahead and find those points on the graph by just um, reading them carefully. But it says the following, sketch the median from segment B to segment AC. Well, what's a median? Look back in 5-3's notes. It says it is the line segment that connects the vertex of an angle to the midpoint of the opposite side. So I'm going from B to AC. So I want to go somewhat, hopefully we're getting pretty close here. The midpoint would be about right there. So this segment's my median. Now, what does it connect? point A to the midpoint of segment AC. You should know that from the definition of a median. Guys, 
Look at the notes, okay? Now, it says, how do you find the slope of a median? How am I going to find the slope of this median? What am I going to use? Oops, I should have said point B here earlier. Hopefully you guys caught that. Um, I'm going to use point B and the midpoint. First, find the midpoint of segment AC, then use point B to f with it to find the slope. Now, how are we going to do that? I'm actually going to do this on the other side or a different side of a piece of paper just for room wise. So let's move this up so we see that. First, find the midpoint. So here I have my points, negative 3, 1, and 2, negative 4. So negative 3, 1, 2, negative 4. Midpoint is the average of the x's and the average of the y's. Put that a little bigger. So what do we get here? Negative 1 half, negative 3 over 2. So that's the midpoint of segment AC. All right. Now I have to find the slope because I'm going to use point B with it. So slope is going to be the change in y or the change of x. So I'm going to go y, which is 3, minus a negative 3 over 2, which makes that positive, right, over 6 minus a negative 1 half. So that's 3 plus 3 over 2, 6 plus 1 half. Guys, time to get common denominators. The common denominator is going to be 2, both in the numerator and denominator. So this number becomes 6 over 2 plus 3 over 2. Now, how did I get that? Remember, that's understood to be over 1. I have to multiply the numerator and denominator by the same thing to change its looks, not its values. So then I get over here, that'd be 12 over 2 plus 1 half. And so what are my two values? 9 over 2 plus 13 over 2. Now, we had a problem like this in the past, okay? When I divide a fraction by a fraction, that's the same thing. So when I divide by a fraction, that's the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So what do I know about those two segments? I can, excuse me, two numbers. The numerator and denominators there cancel out. So I get 9 thirteenths is my slope. So that's what we're going to put here. Our slope is 9 over 13. Now it says write the equation of the median and slope intercept form. Well, that means now I have a point and a slope. So I'm going to use my point 6, 3 and my slope 9 13. First, in the most convenient form, point slope. Go figure, that's the form that we're still going to use. So when I do that, I get y minus 3 equals 9 over 13 times the quantity x minus 6. Now that's point slope form. I want slope intercept, which is, remember, y equals mx plus b form. So I want to get that down. So what am I going to do? First, I'm going to distribute 9 over 13. So I get y minus 3 equals 9 over 13x minus, what's 6 over 1? So that's the 6 and the 9 going together. So that's 54 over 13. Please don't freak out. What am I do next? Add 3 to both sides. It'll be 54 over 13 plus 39 over 13. Where did I get 39 over 13? Well, when I add 3, that's 3 over 1. I need a common denominator to work with my fraction. So that ends up being 39 over 13. So what do I get for my final answer? y equals 9 over 13x minus, okay, 15 thirteenths. That's your final answer. Okay, let's do the last one here together. Number three, the number is off. It's a perpendicular bisector. If I probably took away the diagram, you all could write the equation of the perpendicular bisector. Because didn't we do that for chapter three's writing equations of lines? Now, let's go through this one. It says sketch the perpendicular bisector of segment AB. So what do I do? I go to segment AB and I find the midpoint. And I'm going to get two congruent segments. Perpendicular means I have to form a right angle. So ignoring the vertices, because that's what the definition says, nothing about going through a vertex, I draw in the perpendicular bisector. So there is the perpendicular bisector of segment AB. Now, this is the question. Does the perpendicular bisector of the side of the triangle always contain the angle opposite the side? 
No. See your notes. It will tell you that. Where did you start the sketch? At the midpoint of segment AB. Now what is the slope of the perpendicular bisector of AB? Well remember I find the slope of segment AB first and then I use its opposite reciprocal. So that's a negative 4, 2 and negative 6, negative 4. So I'm going to go negative 4 minus 2 over a negative 6 minus a negative 4. So it's a negative 6 over a negative 2. So that's a positive 3. So my opposite reciprocal is going to be what? A negative 1 third. So that is the perpendicular bisector's slope. Now it says write the equation in standard form. Well, to do that, I have to know a point. Only thing I know so far is the slope. So I have to do midpoint first. And if you don't remember that, go to the last day of equations of lines before the graphing, and we did perpendicular bisectors. So I'm going to use the two points, um, negative 6 plus a negative 4 over 2. I have my other two points, 2 plus a negative 4 over 2. And so that's going to be the point negative 5, negative 1. So that's my point. Here's my slope. I'm going to put it in point slope form first. So we get y minus a negative 1, so that's y plus 1. I have my slope a negative 1 thirds times the quantity x plus 5. All right, so now I need to change it to standard form. Get rid of the fraction. And I think the fastest way for this one is to multiply both sides by negative 3. So when I do that, Notice on the right, that simplifies out to be a 1. Over here, I get negative 3y plus 1 is equal to x plus 5. Now, remember, standard form has no fractions. That's why I got rid of it. Also, remember, a has to be positive. b and c can be negative. So I'm going to move the x over, and I get negative x minus 3y plus 1 is equal to 5. I move the 1 over, I get negative x minus 3y equals 4. Now is that in the correct form? No, because I have a negative value in front of the x. So what do we do? Multiply everything by a negative 1. So it's x plus 3y equals a negative 4. Now I went through this fairly quickly. This will be posted in the homework section of lesson 5-3. So you can do that one. It will be um, probably I will do it above the videos for the notes so that way you can have this but I would definitely know how to do these this is just a good review and bringing together of information that you need to have for the final it just brings it all together alright guys I hope you are gonna have a good day now it's time for your notes um, I hope you're doing great and we will talk more about this tomorrow when I'm back